Today we've got a Nintendo Switch that was sent in by a customer, and this Joy-Con's not working. He thought it might have been something with the console. He went ahead and sent over his controllers and the console. And when I plugged in my Joy-Con, it worked no problem. So, I'm thinking it's something with the Joy-Con. Um, but I do have a battery here that's charged up to almost 4 volts, so it should be a full charge. So, I'm just going to try plugging that in. Okay, and the lights are coming on. So that tells me the fuse for the battery is fine. We'll see what happens. It works. So maybe this battery is just completely dead. If I remove the battery, when you plug it in, it should work, even if there's no battery. Sometimes it'll take a second. Let's give it a second. Because I almost wonder if maybe everything else works, but it's not charging the Joy-Con. Like maybe no power is coming through to the actual Joy-Con itself. While I've got this plugged in here, let's check the voltage. Apparently this console came directly refurbished from Nintendo, but it's been over a year. It's not under warranty anymore. So let me put one probe on ground. And this little component right here is kind of tucked away under these wires, but Hmm. No voltage. I'm going to have to take the console apart, it seems. Maybe the data lines are good, but it's not charging. It must be something with the circuitry over here. I, must, I think I'm going to have to take the whole board out. So let me boot off the console, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're just going to look in the connector here, and that looks good. I believe the component in question this DC D to DC component. I think it's this guy. This one right here. That will control the power. So let's take some diode readings. And I'll do red probe on ground. So we have right here 0 0.58 which is pin 6 and pin 3, which is 0 0.66. So let's go over to the other one. So I see pin 3 is going to be the bottom left one from this view. I think this was 0 0.6 something. Oh, and it's not. It's nothing. It's 0. And how about pin 6? 0.58. Let's get a donor board and we'll we'll check if we have a valid part. Well, I checked the component against the donor boards and it's the same. I'm going to go ahead and just replace it anyways because why not? I'm at full airspeed at about 440 Celsius. And I'm lifting gently. Let's get our donor. Let's prep these pads with some fresh solder. Let me turn my hot air temperature down to 372. That looks good. Let's clean it up and we can just plug it in and give it a give it a quick test. So I just realized something. I did something very dumb. I replaced the wrong component. And if you're watching this, in retrospect, you probably already knew that. I feel really dumb right now. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave this in because it happens. Let's go ahead and turn our air up to 440 again. If 
fresh flux and fresh solder great let's go ahead and put the, the replacement component on I can't believe I did that We'll clean and test one more time. Okay, so I found another issue. Um, kind of like the other side, the other IC, when I measure across these two resistors, I get 100K. And when I measure across these two, I get about 21, 22K. However, when I measure across these two resistors, I get 18k instead of the 100k. I measure across these two, I get 18k. So, and there's no short. So what's causing that? One of these resistors is out of value. So it might not have been that um, controller high C. But let's go ahead and remove one by one. And we'll figure out, we'll get to the bottom of this. I'm sure we're close. Those are the doomed last words of any repairman. I'm going to start by removing that top one. I'm going to put that resistor aside for now. Might be a little different with the heat. 22k. So this other one is the problem. Let's tin those pads. Let's see if I can get this resistor in here without losing it. It's so small. Sorry, I'm trying to grab it off camera. That is so tiny. I'm going to do my little slide technique, but I'm going to come in sideways. let it cool and we'll measure one more time clean up and test one more time I hope this is it hopefully we got it and that'll be useful for the repair wiki huh it's still being pulled to 18k could it be that this component is also bad let's try removing it just curious about something it's still 18k maybe it's this capacitor maybe it's going bad let's get rid of it how does that sound? I don't know why it's giving us 18k. The other one gave us 100k. The other side gave us 100k. Hey, it's 100k. <laughs> so was it that capacitor? It must have been. It wasn't shorting. But maybe it was failing. Or it was the wrong value. Let's see if we can get a new one in place. It wasn't that resistor after all. I would not be surprised at all if this works now. Let's clean and test one more time. Actually, let me measure those resistors one more time. Make sure I'm not crazy. Hundred K and twenty two K. Perfect. Okay, now let's test. Alright, it's booting. 
Fingers crossed. Hey, it's paired. That was it. It was that um, it's that one capacitor. So I'm going to go ahead and take some screenshots, and I'll be able to upload this information to the repair.wiki. Um, I'll post a link in the description for all this information, and um, the repair.wiki is just an awesome place, an awesome resource. I highly recommend anybody who's interested in repair, check it out. Um, if you're having an issue with the device, there's a good chance it's covered. Um, although the repair wiki did talk about that IC that can go bad from time to time, it did not mention the capacitor, but it was a good way to kind of narrow down the area and ultimately help me find a resolution. So that's it for this one. I'll see you all in the next one.